So what is the connection between chronic stress, burnout, and then physical health and autoimmune issues? So I wanna talk about this today because this comes up a lot. And I think that it's important to understand which comes first. So um, when we think about a nervous system in overdrive, which is a lot of the people I work with, this does not mean that someone has to have be having panic attacks. It does not mean that they have to be, you know, diagnosed with anxiety. What it means, because a lot of these people are in really high functioning anxiety, which means they're not at home, you know, being held back by the fear, but they actually are doing, 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 achieving, achieving, achieving. They can't shut their mind off. They have a harder time with rest than they do performance. So that's really good for success and building a career and getting things done and being the go-to person. But when they try to step back and relax um, they're not able to do it they're not able to shut their mind off they start noticing you know memory issues and problem focusing and their body starts to feel tense a lot angst they might be going to get massages or acupuncture or trying to do yoga or things like that to release you know or relieve body tension and while those are all really good things to do i would suggest you know doing those things to stretch your body and to keep things moving and active um or a lot of people will you know run and and they feel better when they can do things to kind of exert some of that adrenaline and things that are associated with a chronic stress response. So a chronic stress response is when that's turned on all the time. So rather than just having the alarm system of stress where we can go out and, um, you know, get out of danger when we need to or have a little bit of that stress response to perform really high when we need to. With these people, that stress response is on all the time. And I want to talk about how that connects to health issues. So just 10 seconds about me. My name is Rochelle Walsh. I've been a complex trauma therapist for two decades, more than two decades, um, specializing in brain-based strategies to help people, their neuroplasticity get to the other side of um of chronic stress, burnout, uh, most of the people I work with have had, you know, some early life experiences or at least a consistent pattern of being in a stress response. My husband practices functional medicine. Um, we have a lot, have had a lot of health journeys in our family, very complicated health journeys with one of our children. My husband had autoimmunity himself. So uh, he specializes in epigenetics and um, predictive food antibody testing. So a lot of the clients that we see have a lot of the same symptoms. So which comes first, the stress or the health problems? Because somebody recently said to me, um, you know, that she didn't think she needed to work on her mind because she really needed to work on her gut biome. She really needed to, because she'd been di diagnosed with some autoimmunity and she really needed to get that under control. And there, that of course is very important, but I want to make this people need to understand this. So um, it's really important to understand where the stress response is coming from. So when you have an underlying stress response, what happens when your body goes into fight or flight is that a lot of things physically happen. So, you know, many, many different chemical reactions, I mean, cortisol, adrenaline, or epinephrine, but many, many others, chemical reactions happen in the body with that stress response. So things happen like, you know, blood goes to our arms and our legs to get out of danger, our food, you know, can't digest properly, we don't have proper digestion, we can't sleep properly, um, we have a lot of things happen in our body, you know, heart rate goes up, cholesterol floods our bloodstream. So a lot of things physically happen in the body with the stress response. And over time, those things that are happening in the body consistently lead to, um, you know, your body starts going, there's a threat, there's a threat. And all of a sudden the body starts um, responding by attacking itself. So we get a lot of autoimmune conditions. There's a very high correlation in the research between, you know, chronic stress and especially early um, life trauma and um, autoimmune conditions. So um, while it is very important to take care of the body and we really encourage that, my husband, that's, you know, he is very passionate about that and does that. It's really important to understand that if you treat one autoimmune symptom or you get your gut back in check by, you know, changing your diet and doing things that can really help, which 
in my experience, again, this is my experience, we've had many, many um, complicated health issues in our family and traditional ways of treating that really don't get to the root of the problem. But when you really get to the root of the problem and you start repairing the microbiome and things like that, that's of course very important. We use epigenetics in our office. It's you know, just fast track that and figure out how to really, for that person, that doesn't change. Epigenetics is something that it doesn't change and and get that health issue under control and get people feeling better, you know, and, and sleeping better. But it's really important to understand that if you don't treat the core of the stress response, why is the person in the stress response? That that stress response, if you don't treat that, then your body's going to be coming. It's it's going to be showing most people with autoimmunity. My husband tells me, you know, have if they have one, they eventually have five because why the body finds new ways to attack itself. So unless you turn off that stress response, you can treat the things that resulted from that stress response, like the autoimmunity, like the gut issues, like the high blood pressure, like the migraines, like the, but if you don't figure out how to turn off that stress response, then you're just going to be playing whack-a-mole with physical symptoms that come from things like repressed emotional states, stored survival stress, subconscious programs. I have to keep going. It's not okay to relax. I have to do everything. I have to be on all the time. It's not okay to uh, share my emotions or feel my emotions. Some people have been so stuck, not because they're not smart, not because they're not faithful. This is really important to understand. Someone can be full of faith. They can be full of all the, you know, the know-how to's. But deep in their core program, if for some reason, um, you know, hypervigilance, always being on, always doing more, you know, being in our head, having to fix things for everyone else, having to always, you know, earn our worth type of thing. If those programs, for whatever reason, were wired in, or if there is early trauma that was, you know, had there's repressed emotions about that, then that stress response is going to continue to be like that smoldering fire in the nervous system and you're treating the symptoms. But if that core that's evoking that uh, stress response, which is inflammation, if you don't fix that, you are going to be forever treating health issues and it's you're going to go down a rabbit hole. So it's super important to understand how to turn off that stress response. So in my program, uh, you know, we work with people very um, strategically to do things in the right order. So we're working through, um, you know, nervous system reset, core belief reprogramming, emotional regulation, and then, you know, those things working in tandem with um, things that you're doing to improve your health. It's like a whole, so, and, and the people that I work with, they're not satisfied. They don't want a, you know, a, a bunch of orange bottles in their pill cabinet. They don't want to be just getting through life. They want to be thriving in life and not just thriving where they're achieving, but where they're really enjoying it and being present and being connected. And for that to happen, you really do want to address the underlying issue of the nervous system response. So even though some of those things feel super simple and elementary, they really change the brain, change the nervous system. So, you know, things like breath work and mindfulness and different types of, you know, meditation and, uh, you know, body awareness and nervous system regulation, you know, tactical exercises that we do for nervous system regulation. If you start with those things and build that foundation and you're creating new neural pathways for calm in the nervous system. And when you do that, everything works better because the body really does know how to heal itself, you know, but when our nervous system is hijacked by the stress response, nothing works like it should. So um, I really also like to share with people that um, it just because something has always been doesn't always mean it must be. We do not need to go into the past to fix the present and the future, right? We need to know where is that 
coming from, meaning like, oh, this fear I have, it's not actually based on right now or this need to perform isn't now. That's an old, outdated thing. I can release that. So sometimes we know, okay, that came from that, but we don't need to go back into all the details of the trauma or the hard thing. What we need to know is how am I responding now? What are the rules I'm operating under? How is my body responding in this situation? How is my nervous system being activated and how can I build in that relaxation? So we can just know that those old pathways are there, but where we really want to focus is on where we're going, on health, wholeness, you know, really being able to know that our the way we're experiencing our body and our life really aligns with our core values. So many women tell me, I know all the right things. It just doesn't feel true. I have a strong faith and I, I believe all these things. It just doesn't, I just can't feel it in my body. And then they get discouraged and then they, you know, maybe have some shame or some guilt about that or frustration or discouragement. Like how can I know all the right things and and not be able to, you know, work this out. Um, it's not a DIY project. It's not um, nervous system regulation and that sort of things. You're not going to read a book and pick that up. If you haven't been able to do it on your own, um, don't feel bad about that. Um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of nuances that it goes to knowing how to do the right things in the order so that we don't become destabilized, so that we don't become overwhelmed. Just like if you were going to, you know, start a new exercise program, you wouldn't want to start out at a level that someone had been doing it for years. So when, you know, when I can't tell you in a video, um, the, the one single thing, there are many things that used in the right order. Um, some of the things I mentioned as well as, you know, emotional regulation and, you know, relieving of stored, um, survival stress. There's many things that we can make small, significant shifts and do them, you know, daily and consistently. Consistency is a big part of that in building those new neural pathways. Um, but understanding that the purpose of this video is just to kind of let you understand that the two go, do go together. Not everybody that has hard things will end up with autoimmunity. I'm not saying that. I'm saying if there are health issues that are exacerbated and often created by the stress response, if you only treat the health issues and you don't fix the underlying stress response, you're probably not going to get the lasting results because the body will continue to be under that stress. So I hope that's helpful. And, um, you know, if you're, if you're someone who is going after your health issues, really getting to the root of it, kudos to you because it's too easy in our society to just, you know, want to have the quick fix, the bandaid fix, but you know, the people I work with, they're not, they're not the they're not typical um, people. And if you're watching this, if this resonates with you, you're probably not either. I mean, they want to live they want, they don't want their brain to de cognitive function to decline. They want to continue to not only be, you know, effective in their life, but they really want to be joyful and um, present. That's the name of my program, Joyful and Presence, a 90 day program where we work with people through this. We do have a component of the health and wellness through the functional medicine piece in that program, very high level training, very high level support. Uh, and the type of people that I see in there and people that I'm sure are doing things on their, you know, in other, through other providers, they're people that don't want to just take a quick band-aid fix they want to really have you know live life to the fullest and be able to be healthy enough to do that physically emotionally make the most of their relationships enjoy the life that they have and so if that's you and this video resonates feel free to uh, subscribe to my channel and listen to future videos and training and i wish you well make today great